Hi, so Margaret, I really want to have a great garden this year. And I know you've done it for many years. What are some of the things that I need to think about before we get out there and start looking at our plot? Yeah, so I feel like there's some really foundational things that a gardener can do to set themselves up for success that are often forgotten about. And sometimes people give up when, when they have failures along the way. The seedlings dry out mm -hmm. or die. Right. Uh, they have piles that are building up and starting to look junky. They don't have the materials when they need them that weekend, so they just give up. So I like to set myself up for success. So when I look at all of the things that go into a successful garden, we have the obvious thing, which is our garden beds. And having nice, wide pathways where you can maybe bring a wheelbarrow or wow. carry big things. Right. Having some of those accessible, but then there can be smaller sort of veins, you know, they've got the artery and the vein system where you can have smaller pathways to get around. Mm -hmm. So thinking about movement through your garden. So beyond the beds, we have things like tool storage. Mm -hmm. Where are we keeping our tools so we know where they are, that they're protected from the environment, and they stay in good shape and, and available. Right. And there's also bigger tools, like maybe your tomato cages or shade cloth, mm -hmm. or the wheelbarrow. So having a spot designated for these larger, bulkier items. Then there's the compost. So if you're gonna do composting, whether it's a bin or on the ground, figuring out where that's gonna go, right. and getting that spot ready. Another component to the garden is soil piles, as a general term. And that might be your finished compost that you sifted. Mm -hmm. It might be the seedling mix. After you've transplanted your seedlings, there's remaining soil in there. Right. You can save that for future seedling mix. Right. If you buy compost or you buy manure or you buy fertilizers, these can all go in a specific spot so that they're ready and protected and available for right. you. And then we also have irrigation. So in areas where we're gonna to have to irrigate, having that area set up with uh, timers and your nozzles on your hoses and a watering can, somewhere that is accessible to you and ready to go for right. the dry weather. Right. And then inside we have a couple components. We have our seeds that we've collected and bought. So those need to be stored somewhere that's dry and cool and dark. Right. Uh, so having them have a little spot to go in. And then the last part to really getting better and better at gardening is to be recording things oh, yeah. and writing it down. So I keep a journal and I just keep my notes. So in the journal, what are some of the things you talk about? Probably about weather, if it was a cool spring, a warm spring, or what we did, we had a drought this year, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then I like to write activities I do. Oh. So today I sowed lettuce seed, or today I transplanted the tomatoes. Right. And then I can learn about whether that was too early or too late based on how they do, and I can revisit that uh, over the winter time. And you'd probably want to record, you know, when the last, uh, when the first frost date, when that sure. was passed. So you could put your tender plants out after the first frost? Yes, the, the frost date is a really important one for a lot of crops. Right.